The Keeper is the Steven Seagal mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world that he's back and he's bad. And I appreciate that. At acting. It starts off with Seagal and his partner about to make a bust. You're saying you don't have a warrant? He doesn't even know what that is, so no, he doesn't have one. Which means they have to get creative to make sure this bus sticks. So Seagal comes up with the ingenious plan of kicking the door in and murdering the f out of everyone. <laughs> Now Seagal just needs a quick break from all that standing and then they can leave. But his partner is pretty sure they just executed a family for no reason and is horrified by what they've done. Look, you're joking, right, man? Seagal can't believe he's hearing this rookie shit right now. What the fuck? I thought I knew you. He kills like five families a shift, so stop being a little bitch. His partner has a moment of clarity and sees Seagal as the monster he truly is. When Seagal tries to order a Philly cheesesteak over the radio, he seizes the moment and takes him out. But because karma's bullshit, he's somehow okay. He had a pulse, Trevor. Motherfucker. Then, when he tries to finish him off for the good of humanity, his good intentions get blown the f away <coughs> by Seagal's hospital gun. <coughs> While this whole betrayal thing would be the entire plot of lesser movies, Seagal knows coherency is for pussies and it's never mentioned again. Then he realizes we're already like 10 minutes in and we haven't had a single scene that only exists to talk about how awesome he is. You're the inspiration for every guy that ever applied for the SWAT team. I've seen you do shit that's beyond belief. Not only that, but he can curl 10 pounds for reps. Now that we know he's the best at everything, he gets a letter letting him know that since he's been off work, senseless murders have dropped 1200% and they're gonna have to let him go. He's devastated because he really thought it would have been closer to 15. So he takes a long hard look in the mirror, vows to do better and moves to Texas. When he gets down there, they only have one request. Don't kill children. Fuck you. Oh. He will never agree to that. Let's go. Anyways, he goes to meet with former Raiders owner Al Davis, who has a special job for him. I need for you to take care of Nikita personally. But Seagal says fuck that he would never touch something that old. So they settle on him just being her bodyguard instead. Look, he's not just a sexy body, he's a real person with real feelings, so show some respect and his eyes are up here. After mandating that she take eight hours of sexual harassment training once every quarter, he takes the job. Well, if I'm gonna do this, a few things are gonna have to change. First is that none of the bathroom cameras are even facing the bathroom. Then he installs some skirt mirrors and self-destruct lines before leaving the boring sh to his body double. That's when Seagal decides he's a native Texan. You know, my daddy's from, from Texas. And that the sh he says won't be as creepy if he says it like this. Wherever you go, I can find you. Which is how he talks now, and it definitely is. Yeah, he's coming. Now that he's not creepy anymore, he can go back to doing what he loves most. <laughs> Creeping. After confusing the sh out of this guy. Who's that white guy over there? You? All he needs to do is randomly attack a couple strangers. <laughs> which quiets the voices. And now they can call it a night. The next morning, she complains that Seagal's a fucking psycho and she's terrified. He tells her it's probably just normal onset dementia. No different than the other guy his age. And that he probably won't kill her. But Seagal knows he definitely will, and so does the old man. What? 
Then the movie somehow gets even darker when her repressed memories There's something you gave me as a little girl. Come rushing back. <laughs> Anyways, we're like an hour into this piece of shit and have yet to see any semblance of a plot. Jesus Christ. So thank fucking God when something finally happens and she gets kidnapped. <laughs> where she'll be so much safer. But rescuing one of Seagal's victims isn't gonna be that easy. And after having one of his best sit-down shootouts, he takes off the license plate, which is something he's trying to work through with his therapist. But it is a process before hopping back in to have the most relaxed car chase you'll ever see. After that heart-pounding shit, Seagal goes full Kaiser Sosa and unloads on her. The good guys know they can only keep her safe for so long and they need to come up with something fast. So he calls up his boy, who's actually seen some of Seagal's movies, as part of a hazing incident that got way out of hand. And knowing that Seagal has no idea how to even hold a gun, easily slaps it out of his hand. Get off the bike! But he still got one last trick up his sleeve. <laughs> Fuck, he missed and she got away. Right in front of the police, which is so embarrassing. Down on your knees! But he thinks quick and gets out of it with this hard hitting and emotional speech. These folks tried to kill me and kidnap my friends. They know that's bullshit. Because she could have easily gotten off that bike. But they agree to let him go if he'll just stop trying to talk like he's from Texas. And I appreciate that. Which is great because even though they know who took her, Tori Harris, the kidnapping laws in Texas are complicated. We can't find her until we know why she was taken. Either way, Al Davis has more important sh to deal with than his daughter being kidnapped. Slayton, I got other business to attend to. So would you kindly f off? Now please leave. Now, because of something to do with Megan's Law that Seagal didn't want to get into, I appreciate that. he meets up with his driver at a church eight hours away in New Mexico. I thought you might need this. I don't know where else to give them to you. I'm sure the car would have been fine, but we gotta stretch this show out somehow. The movie really gets rolling, and now there's a serial killer they have to deal with. Never mind, it's just Seagal doing Seagal things. Now that whoever the fuck these guys are, are dead, Seagal has a real hankering for some waffles. On one hand, those waffles were amazing, but on the other, he hasn't killed anyone for almost an hour, and he just can't hold it in any longer. He gets so excited, he even shoots his driver. When he tries to finish the job, he's interrupted by one of his biggest pet peeves. A good Samaritan. Seagal goes full sloppy slappy on him and shows true perseverance by surviving what would cause most men to die of shame. His driver finds it so noble, he forgives him for the whole attempted murder thing. Meanwhile, Al Davis is busy looking as much like Al Davis as humanly possible when he's interrupted. How'd you get in here? <sighs> I'm sure he killed a bunch of your staff. Let's just move on. I'm sorry. You're right. Then Davis drops the surprise bombshell twist. Make a long story short. Oh please, the shorter the better. I found one of the richest deposits of uranium in the history of North America. Oh for fuck's sake, we don't have time for this. Now that they know she was kidnapped over a fucking uranium mine, they can finally rescue her from what I think is the Gaul's trailer. <laughs> <laughs> no! Now that's definitely Seagal's trailer. Anyways, they're at the meetup spot to trade the girl for the uranium mine in an exchange that would definitely hold up in court. Boy, you can kiss my ass. Seagal keeps a close eye on everything while staying out of sight by using these tiny binoculars made up of two Hubble telescopes. He tells his men to wait for his signal. Still a sight, I'll let you know. Then fucking slaughters them. 
Davis gives up the deed or whatever the hell it is, which they pass along to the worst lawyer ever. And just in case someone giving away a uranium mine wasn't suspicious enough, he also gives them $5 million for their troubles. Satisfied? Go f yourself. So they bring her out, who could have prevented this whole sh show if she just stepped off that fucking bike. You got what you wanted, now let her go. But now they have a problem. We'll kill every fucking one of you. And he really means that. Then the lawyer pipes up. Pages are missing. These contracts are useless. Missing pages doesn't even crack the top 10 on why that contract is fucking useless. And why is anyone even listening to this guy when Seagal just warned everyone that he's starting his killing spree? <laughs> The second she moves away from that windshield, her ass is his. <laughs> F he's out of ammo, but he gets a bigger thrill out of murdering people face to face anyways. Then we finally see where most of the movie's budget went. <laughs> Blowing up some barrels in a field. Truly next level shit. Now it's the final showdown, just Seagal against whatever her name is, when this guy does the one thing Seagal hates more than good Samaritans. Okay, okay, I give up. You are so dead. <laughs> then the movie ends on a happy note with Al Davis executing this guy before being mowed down in a hail of gunfire. <laughs> 